Open the door. It looks like we're going to have our first genuine F-bomb in the MCU in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Or at least that's what this clip that we're about to check out had inside of it. Stay here with Rocket. Watch him. That's who they're coming for. I want to come. No. Mantis, watch Drax. Groot, you know what to do with these. Push down on it. What? Push it down. I am pushing down on it. Push the button. It looks like you're pushing the keyhole. The what? There's a button under the handle. Press that in. Okay. Now what? Open the door. That is a stupid design. And your instructions were very unclear. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Cosmic Culture, the channel where we talk all things major movie and television news, theories, breakdowns, and much, much more. I'm your host, Chris, and today we got some Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 news to discuss, and I'm very excited for this film individually, and I'll talk to that for just a little bit before we dive into the clip and that really funny F-bomb, but... Guardians of the Galaxy has been, on its own, a fantastic standalone franchise. And I say that because Marvel Studios is a big bubble, and everything inside of it is connected, and one project doing well really reflects on how the next project is going to do. Well, we all know Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania didn't do super, super well. However, Guardians of the Galaxy is its own entity, it's its own franchise, and James Gunn's vision for the trilogy is really going to show how emotion for characters in the long run carries over success. I have high anticipation for Guardians of the Galaxy to do very well in the box office and to be an extremely well-liked movie. Now, the reason for this is we are following the Guardians. We want to know what happens with the Guardians outside of all of the MCU bubble. And for that reason, the emotion is there. We know some characters are going to probably die or sacrifice themselves or end their story and we know that this is the end of the Guardians of the Galaxy as we know them. There will probably be a continuation, whether Adam Warlock leads the Guardians moving forward, or Star-Lord survives and he's going to get together a new team. But we know James Gunn's Guardians of the Galaxy as we know them have met the end of their journey. If you haven't already, consider subscribing and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our other uploads happening daily here in the channel. You can also follow me on my other socials, Instagram at Chris M. Rosser and Twitter at TheCultureChris. Links to both of those can be found in the description down below. So, Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3. Lots of surprises ahead for us. I know we think we've pieced together a good part of the plot, which is actually highlighted in this clip that we just got. We'll talk about that in just a second. However... There will be a lot of moments in this film, I think, that will be a little bit of a surprise. I think James Gunn is very, very cleverly leading us one way while we're going to end up going another. For example, we all think Rocket is going to die. It was made very clear in this clip that the plot point is they're coming for Rocket. Now, it's interesting because it seems like the Guardians are hiding on this other Earth. This is definitely a similitude to what we've seen in the comics with the High Evolutionary who creates this world with his creations that's like Earth, but as we've seen with some of his civilians, not exactly Earth. Now, from different trailers and clips that we've seen, it seems like they're hiding from Aisha and the Sovereign, and of course, Adam Warlock, who was created by the Sovereign, just to destroy the Guardians of the Galaxy and to capture Rocket. James Gunn has made it very clear that the Guardians of the Galaxy storyline has always been about Rocket. Many of us probably would think Star-Lord, but the story and the conclusion will show us that Rocket has been the main character of the Guardians of the Galaxy the entire time. Now, whether that means he's going to end with a sacrifice, he's going to die, get killed, get reverted back to a normal raccoon, or even end up being the only Guardians of the Galaxy character left, meaning Star-Lord, Gamora... Nebula, all of these characters are going to die and will be left with Rocket. That has remained to be seen, and I'm very curious to see what direction they end up ultimately going with that. But in this clip, it is reiterated that they're coming for Rocket. We see Adam Warlock in some different trailers, I believe on this exact planet, 
chasing after the Guardians, trying to capture Rocket. So this is probably pretty early on in the movie. The Guardians are hiding away. They realize somebody's coming for them or something's coming from for them from the Sovereign. And that's going to be Adam Warlock, who ultimately will end up probably being a Guardian of the Galaxy. Definitely will end up being a hero more than a villain. He's not the main villain of this movie by any means. And this is an introduction of a character who's going to end up being extremely important in the future for the cosmic side of the MCU and maybe even for Secret Wars and beyond that since Adam Warlock is by every word of the means one of the most powerful characters ever to be created by Marvel period. Now in this clip we also get something very interesting. We get to see the comedy and the seriousness of the Guardians of the Galaxy. This will be assuming it makes it into the movie and they don't bleep it out the first ever F-bomb in the MCU. Now, if you're not familiar with how rated R movies work, there are certain requirements, things that have to be met in order for it to not be a rated R movie. And at the current moment, you are allowed two F-bombs and to still be a PG-13 movie. So there is no reason why they couldn't use one and still be considered PG-13 if they so desired. And James Gunn, the writers, Chris Pratt as Star-Lord, they've decided to include an F-bomb. And this is a very interesting use of it because they're obviously rushed they have somewhere to go he wasn't just annoyed that nebula couldn't figure out how to open the door they got somewhere to go they have something to do and it's obviously very very important for the overall survival of a the team and b probably the galaxy from what they're concerned with so very interesting the use of this swear word it's a word everybody probably hears it pretty much every single day not condoning the use of it or not of it but I think the interesting twist here is that James Gunn is including this word in his movie and that Marvel is seemingly allowing them to, Disney is seemingly allowing them to, which shows we're preparing for something. That something is probably Deadpool, who's going to have a rated R movie with many F words in it. It was one of his favorite words in the first two movies. I don't see why they would try to change that in the third. So maybe Marvel is starting to open up its horizons a little bit, leave that, we'll call it quote-unquote kid-friendly idea of what these movies should be. And this is nothing new. Since Phase 4, we've been dabbling in a little bit more graphic violence, some bloody scenes, and a little bit more language and more mature tones. We've also had Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, which was a pseudo-horror film. Not exactly horror film, but had horror-esque moments, darker tones. Very interesting to see that coming, since we know Midnight Suns, Agatha Coven of Chaos, and some of this darker, more demon stuff is also being included. So Disney's testing the waters, I think, with this specific F-bomb. This, the first F-bomb in the MCU, and I definitely thought it was worth noting and bringing up in a video. Is this something that will bother you moving forward if Disney decides to use a little bit more coarse language, or... Do you not really care? Does that not matter to you whatsoever? Let me know your thoughts about A, that, and B, The Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which will be coming out very, very soon here, just around the corner. Thank you guys so much for watching till the very end of the video. If you find it helpful, useful, or entertaining, consider subscribing and turning on that notification bell. And I'll be sure to catch all of you guys in the next one right here on Cosmic Culture.